you're looking for honest reviews on products, you came to the right place. Today, I'm going to be looking at the Mont Bell Bursalite rain system. This is the jacket and the pants. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm a United States Army veteran. When I do these reviews, my word is everything. It means a lot to me to give you an open, honest review and the reputation of my channel. I will not risk any of it to promote a product I do that I don't believe in. I'll tell you in my honest opinion what I feel is good and what I think could be better on any products that I review. So that being said, this rain jacket system right here was purchased by me. Um, I'm a person, I love to travel, I like backpacking, I like mountain biking, stuff like that. So I'm always looking for something that's small, lightweight, easy to take with me, but it also has to work. My go-to in the past, and probably still, this is still a good jacket. This is the Patagonia Torrent Shell 3L. This is uh, folded up into its own uh, pocket. This is just a jacket. <laughs> if we look here... This is a complete rain system. This is the jacket and the pants. Now they are sold separately and when you buy them you get a stuff sack for each. But you can easily fit the jacket and the pants in the included bag together. I know backpackers and some people are really concerned about weight. This entire system and I, I wear everything's extra large. Extra large pants, extra large jacket so these are bigger items. The two items in this one stuff sack come in at 11 ounces. That is a couple ounces lighter than just the Patagonia. I believe the jacket comes in about six and a half ounces. So the rest of the weight is in the pants. So I want to go over some specs. So I'm going to read it to make sure I get it right. Um, as of filming this, the retail price on the jacket is $219 and the pants are $149. It's a little bit pricey, but sometimes, you know, you get what you pay for. So first we'll talk about the construction. They use what's called a K monocut pattern, which is basically like they try to make this whole thing out of one piece. So what that does is there's less seams on here to put in there, and there's less things to, uh, to uh, seal up. So the less you had to seal up, the less chances of water coming in, and it makes for a very nice fitting jacket. You can move your arms all over, and it does not move the jacket so freedom of movement is outstanding in this jacket now as far as the material this is a two layer Gore-Tex Infinium windstopper fabric a 10 denier ballistic airtight nylon rip stop with a DWR finish so what that means is DWR will degrade after time but you can retreat it but so the material itself isn't like 100% waterproof but the uh, treatments what's going to help now this has a water resistance and that's important when you're looking at raincoats, you want to, or even tents, you're looking at your hydrostatic head pressure. That's pretty much in millimeters how much water can I sit on the fabric before it penetrates and leaks through. 10,000 is about the standard for an average rain jacket to where it go 20,000, like what the Patagonia is rated at. It's pretty good, and I have yet to have that leak through on me. This and the pants are rated at 30,000. It has a breathability rating of 43,000 GM square for 24 hours. Not 100% sure what that means, but if, you, if you're interested, that's, that's the, uh, the numbers there. So there you have it. That's uh, the prices and the materials and everything else like that. Start off looking at the uh, pants here. I believe that's uh, reflective right there. These things almost feel like paper. It's unreal. Uh, so you do have a string. There's no uh, little plastic thing here that normally you, you pull and it holds things tight. So you do have to tie this in a knot. Uh, I would like to see that added because I really don't like tying things in knots, especially when it gets wet. Sometimes it gets a little hard. There is a uh, hook, a little hoop right here. Imagine that's for hanging them up to let them dry after you've worn them. Um, The, you can see a little bit of the seam seal right there. Not a lot in here. They, they definitely try to uh, reduce it. So there's like one in the front, one in the back, and that's uh, that's about it. Uh, no frills here. There's no pockets to be had, which is kind of unfortunate. 
there's not even anything on the inside which would be nice because generally you know, they have a key or something like that but I guess you know you you have pockets here in the jacket so and then down here for the cuffs you just have a drawstring that you pull I'm not even 100% sure how that works let me cut in here I totally forgot I had the instructions for the pants uh, Mont Bell send you instructions for the jacket and the pants I've had these for a while and I totally forgot about this so what you do here is you pull the string out you give it a little crossover it goes under your boot and then it wraps around your ankle and that's what holds the pants to your boots and that way it doesn't come up above and allow water to run in so that's how that little string works and one thing I do like on the Patagonia there is a zipper on the pants which makes putting it on with your boots on uh, really easy this doesn't offer that but you know then again you're looking at saving weight so you're not adding zippers and extra material but um, you will probably have to take your shoes off it's not a terribly big opening here but yeah Mont Bell actually has some weird ways that they work these closures, and I'll show you another one here in a second. So, there you have it. There's the, uh, the pants. Now let's take a look at the rain jacket. We'll start from the bottom and work our way up. As you expect with something that's this expensive, uh, you have very good YKK zippers. There is a like rubber membrane here which helps keep water from penetrating through the zipper. There is also a piece of material here that goes behind the two zippers which helps keep water from penetrating. Now, one thing that's weird is the zipper is on the left hand side, not the right hand side like we're used to. And it is a bit firm in the use. Now this is a little weird here. This is the string for tightening up the bottom. So, but you would think you would do it here, right? You'd think you would squeeze this and, and tighten it up and all that. That's not how Mont Bell does it. This is very weird. Inside the pocket is the string that you pull these strings and that's what tightens the bottom up. And then when you want to loosen it, you come down here and release it from here. Kind of a uh, weird setup. I'm, I don't know why they did that. Um, so this is very soft feeling, very nice. Uh, there's no inside pockets whatsoever on this jacket. So the zipper is a little on the firm side, getting up and down, but that's probably because of the waterproof coating that's in here. Now the uh, the cuffs have a, have some elastic. This is really nice. You have elastic and you have uh, the Velcro on here. I think it'd probably be pretty nice. So let's say you need to go check your watch. You don't have to undo the Velcro. You have that really, really nice feature there. This looks like it's reflective. I'm not 100% sure. I do believe the name is, and that is reflective. Now, you have two pockets right here. I showed earlier the strings for tightening the bottom are here. And if you notice, these pockets are up kind of high. And that's for like people that backpack and stuff like that. So when you wear a backpack and you got your waistband right here securing it, you still have uh, use of your pockets. Pretty good feature. Now the jacket is uh, nice and long. I'm a taller guy, I'm six foot one. You can see it covers all the way down here. So if you're walking around, you got a wallet or some stuff in your pockets, it should stay down there. Now one nice feature that you don't really see in jackets that are this light are pit zips right here to help ventilate the uh, jacket. So pit zips do work, they're pretty effective. Uh, the only thing I would like to see that I think they should have done is most pit zips, or at least the ones I've experienced like the Patagonia, have two zippers. So that way you can kind of limit it. This one here, you know, you kind of committed like maybe I just really want to open up right here but I can't if I want to open up down lower I have to open up the entirety of the jacket so I would like to see I wish you know it had that but I mean I understand what they're doing here that they're saving saving weight and every little thing you add on here adds weight it's important when putting on a hood 
we have a protector here that keeps you know the stuff from smashing into you into you you have uh, your drawstrings here which just use this disc very lightweight disc to uh, cinch that up sorry to cut back into the video again there's a couple features I forgot about on the jacket and one I didn't really just understand until recently so you do have this velcro attachment here that that helps you adjust like the uh, the hood so if it's down a little too low you can use this to pull back also the hoop that's in here what this is designed for I guess if you're using this as like a windbreaker you can roll the jacket up or roll the hood up and then what you do is you attach it to there and now the hood is secured and out of your way so totally uh, missed or forgot about that whole design feature uh, when I did the video but something I just want to add in and then for me I keep missing the fact that these jackets have these right here so this one works a little bit different. This one's actually pretty cool. Instead of uh, pulling this to tighten, I noticed I had those big goofy loops sticking out. But what you're supposed to do is uh, <laughs> pull this, and then that tightens the hood. And then you have this dangling down here and not these goofy loops like I had sticking out. So that's the proper way to tighten the uh, hood. I didn't realize that. I as a matter of fact, I, I, looking at the jacket, I didn't even realize until I was watching my own video, and I was like, what are those things? And I had to pull the jacket out, because I just never really noticed it. I guess the jacket's a little more high-tech than I am, so. I just wanted to uh, jump in there and show you those uh, couple features that I missed on the, uh, my initial intro there. Right there, and in the back here, you can see it. There is another drawstring. Hopefully you can see it. it's kind of hard when you're by yourself. But right here, you have a drawstring. What, what's nice is you use these to tighten this up. And then uh, back here, what this does, this keeps this thing nice and tight. So when you turn your head, the hood moves with your head. You know, one of the most infuriating things, <laughs> you know, we're wearing something with the hood and you turn around and you're like, staring into the side of the hood so that can be a safety issue you know if you're like out walking and you're trying to cross a road you're riding a bike and you're trying to look for something and you can't see it and uh you know plus it's just a pain actually this is kind of a little weird with these uh straps dangling here i do wish the zipper started here though but i don't know um Yeah, other than that, I mean, fantastic jacket. Don't even really feel like you're wearing so lightweight. Like I said, this is one of the better fitting coats I've ever had. I mean, it's like nothing. It weighs absolutely nothing. Uh, so far, it seems to breathe pretty good. I'll give you a more uh, objective opinion on that once I actually go out there and go for a walk wearing this and see if the pit zips work and how everything does. So. The only step now to go ahead and finish this review is we got to wait for some rain. We're going to go out there in a nice heavy downpour and we're going to go ahead and walk, walk in that and see how does this jacket breathe when you have it all zipped up in the rain and how does it actually perform in keeping the rain out of the jacket. So I'll see you uh, when it rains. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've been waiting for. We finally got a pretty good steady rain. So now I'm going to go out here and walk. Now, I got a lot of heat, <laughs> some flack from my video that I did with the Patagonia. Everybody said, oh, you can't walk to the mailbox and back and test out a coat. That's not what I did, but I wasn't very clear on how I was testing it. So I'm going to go around the block here. I'm out in the country, so a block is a little over a mile. So I'm going to meander around a little bit. It'll be about a two-mile walk. should take me about an hour. Now, for the intensive purposes of testing, you're going to be able to tell if the jacket is decent in a, in a one hour walk. I did a, another video. Uh, one bled through before I got to the mailbox. I was already soaked. And another one I did an hour walk and I got drenched and it about ruined my phone. So I'm going to go for a one hour walk. We're going to put this jacket to the test out here walking. 
Now I know people are backpacking and say wear a backpack, go out there, but sorry for the intents of doing this. I'm not paid to do this test, so I'm not going to go get my gear wet. I'm sorry, but um, I'm not putting on a backpack and having to deal with drying and all that stuff for a uh, product test. But this is going to be still a pretty good test if the entirety of the suit here. and the bottom. Oh, I should mention too, the pants only come in black. Uh, that's why I don't have blue pants. <laughs> they only offer one color option, which is kind of sad. I wish they would offer like a matching, but yeah. So I'm going to go for an hour walk. We're going to go out there. We're going to move. I'm going to walk fast. And what we're going to look for is to see if during a normal walk out here, some decent rain, will this bleed through or will it keep me dry? How well does it keep me from overheating while I'm on my walk? And you know how comfortable is it? So we're gonna go give all these tests. So that it's just unbelievable to think that something so thin is gonna keep me dry. But you know, get what you pay for sometimes. So let's uh, let's go see if I made a uh, good purchase. Just so everybody can see, I am out here walking. We are doing this in the rain. Just actually got hit with a pretty good band that came through here. It was a pretty good test. It was hard. It wasn't very long, about maybe a minute. Not something I could really videotape in because it's the water drop would stick to the GoPro lens. But yeah, so I said, just want to do a verify with everybody. We are out here walking and trying out the rain suit in the rain. So I'll let you know uh, how it goes when we get back to the house. All right. So how did the uh, jacket and all that go? I'll tell you what, it is really surprising for something this light, how uh, warm it is. It is absolutely amazing. I'll tell you what, I am, I am hot. I am very hot. Uh, I probably should have wore a jacket because I know all this here is sweat. I have just, woo. Even with the uh, pit zips open. Um, so, my thoughts while walking, um, one critique I would have is that for, for the um, hood that comes over, I like what the Patagonia did. It has a little visor built in to help keep the rain out. This thing is kind of like just flush against your face, so when it's like I got hit with a pretty good band, um, I was just getting hit in the face. So, probably uh, wearing a hat would have helped, plus it would have helped add some air through here um, it did feel pretty good when I got into the wind and that and the wind kind of hit in the coat and I could feel it uh, circulating around so um, and I know it was hard to see and you just have to take my word for it it did storm pretty good when I was out there but you know one thing we want to look at here in the jacket is dark spots blemishes any signs of um, water penetrating and it's not if you look I mean everything's still just beat it up on here the water's just beat it up. Let me zip these up before. It's easier to do this with the jacket on, I think, than when you take it off. It is nice too is that there is plenty of material here. So that way when you do tighten up the cuffs, these things stay. I had one rain jacket, it didn't, and these tabs stayed sticking up. It was kind of aggravating. Um, let's check. Yeah, pockets are dry. So, moment of truth here. And everything looks pretty good. I know I had to unzip that thing to uh, let it breathe. I'd be like, oh, I just noticed there is like a little visor built into the jacket there. See, the drawstring ends there and there. Oh, no, it's right there. It's, just, it's elastic right there here or something. No, the string's elastic. Okay. But they did build like a little visor in there. I just... Probably needs to be a little bit bigger. It didn't really 
Um, I said, I know this is sweat because I was hot. You could tell if you start feeling cold, that's water seeping through. That's the rain water seeping through and all that. I mean, if you're feeling damp and you're hot, it's it's sweat. So. Oh no, I mean a good test too is like your arms, like if your arms are dry, the material did not seep, seep through. I will say this is a, a fantastic feeling jacket. It does not even, except for the fact that you're, it's really warm. Uh, you don't even realize that you're wearing it. Uh, it's very light. It moves fantastic. Um, and it's very quiet. It's probably one of the quietest rain jackets I've ever worn. You know, normally you're like, zip, 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 or it sounds all crunchy, crinkly, and uh, everything else kind of that comes with the rain jacket. But wow, this thing it feels great. Like I said, I just I really cannot believe for something so light. It's so dry. Okay, they do give you a little hoop right here to hang it up and dry. So let me find something here. So I know backpackers, people hiking and stuff like that, would want to see a test with the backpack on because I know that's going to add pressure points. There's pros and cons to that. You know, yeah, you're going to have the pressure points, but then too, you had the backpack protecting like a big portion of the jacket. And I really want to make sure that the rain's kind of hitting the backside, stuff like that, that the jacket's working, you know, as a jacket without any other interference. So I do feel confident it will work. I think the only downside to the jacket with it being a DWR coated material that is something that you're going to have to retreat later. It will kind of break down, but I don't think it's going to break down for quite a while. So it's not really that big of an issue. It's, but it is a bit different than something like the Patagonia. That's like a material that's designed to keep water out versus a treated material. But you know, that's the price you pay if you want something that is extremely lightweight and small. So same thing with the pants. Very comfortable. I don't even feel like I'm wearing them at all um, feels slightly warm down here but not as bad and sure how well totally dry everything's totally dry the only downside to these is that there's no zipper in the legs like the Patagonia so I can't I have to take my shoes off to get these off there is also uh, a lack of a zipper in the front for like males this might be important if you want to go use the bathroom but you know if you're hiking or something like that you're probably wearing like athletic shorts that don't have a zipper in the front anyhow so just something I wanted to throw in there and point out so all in all I think the Mont Bell system is fantastic it's a great system I mean it's like stupid lightweight packs down stupid small the only downside to that is it comes at a cost. So you're like $300 or so for the entirety of everything. You know, you're looking maybe like 200 for the same system on like a Patagonia. But, you know, it depends on what your mission is. If you're looking to be ultra lightweight, ultra small, this is the way to go. It's going to cost you more, but, you know, that's going to be small. If you're traveling and you don't mind a little extra weight and you've got the room and you want to save money, uh, you could look at something like the Patagonia or other systems, you know, uh, out there. But this video is about the, the Mont Bell. But, you know, I do want to make comparisons to some stuff that I do have experience with. But, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with, with my purchase. Like I said, I bought this with my own money. Um, I wasn't paid for this, but I have the material, have the product. So I'd like to just go ahead and give a review out there to anybody that's looking. Like I said, if this thing didn't work if it was junk I would let you know in a heartbeat hey um, I made a bad purchase it doesn't work um, I've had some other products unfortunately you know no reviewer really ever wants to leave a bad review on a product but you know if you're if you're honest and your integrity means something to you if a product's bad you will say something but I really got uh, no complaints with the system like I said um, I nitpicked a few things that I've already talked about so I'm not really going to rehash that stuff but you know at the end of the day would I buy this absolutely if you got the money you're looking for something ultra lightweight really small or you know I could even picture like if I'm mountain biking now I'm gonna throw this thing in my camelback just in case if I get caught in the rain because this thing is so small 
and and it can fit and i have it so i've, I've been out there caught in the rain before it's miserable you get very cold <laughs> so yeah it's, it's a great system i highly recommend it so hopefully uh you found this review informative and this helps you out in decision making if you're looking to purchase this product like i said i, I recommend it's very very good product so anyhow thanks for watching thanks for giving me the time to explain this product hopefully you subscribe for more uh, possible product reviews travel camping stuff like that so Till next time, thanks, take care, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.